welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Today is going to be quite a ridiculous day. Uh, I, like so many others, recently saw the new James Bond film, No Time to Die. Now, controversially, I didn't actually enjoy it that much, but it did really make me want an Aston Martin, and specifically an Aston Martin DB5, the iconic James Bond car. Well, right now, you find me down at Dylan Miles, and I'm going to be collecting this Aston Martin DB5 to enjoy for the day. Now, I'm not strictly going to be sort of test driving it, because the other ludicrous part about today is a friend of mine, Nick, runs a video production company that specialises in filming super high-end luxury houses. And today, he's filming a £30 million mansion on the iconic Wentworth estate in Surrey. And he sent me a message saying, I'd love to involve a classic car in the shoot. So I thought, well, what a great opportunity to help out a friend and pretend to be James Bond for the day. Dylan, you have got some insane cars looking around. As you can see, Aston's are sort of the backbone of, of, of my, my uh, business and uh, my obsession, basically. This is a, a DB5 convertible that was restored by Aston Martin Work Service, and again, just finished. Okay. Uh, and this car belongs to Prince Michael Kent, so Oh, wow, okay. Are they, are they much rarer than the coupes, the convertibles? Yes, they are. Yeah. So there are 886 coupes and only 123 convertibles. Probably the holy grail of V8 Vantages is, is this car. Uh, which is the, I think it's the 10th from last ever V8 Vantage x -Pack. So it's an 89 model, uh, very low mileage, very low owners, original uh, British Racing Green with manual uh, transmission. So that's a super car. That is now sold. Uh, very lucky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, these two, yeah. the minute I walked in, I was like, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know what this colour is, but it's amazing. It's called Old English Pewter. Okay. It's a very rare colour. There are only two Old English Pewter Vantages with a uh, fallen interior like this. And this again is also an original manual transmission car. So that's just come in. Uh, okay, so this is a, a car that very few people uh, know about. So there are 50 of these. It's called a, a V8 Vantage Legato. Uh, the engine is the same as the x pack Vantage, but it was a, a, a very low production car built uh, Aston in conjunction with Zagato uh, in 86 to 88 I think and I so say there are only 50 cars this is the first production car and it has a really interesting history because it was bought in 93 by Rowan Atkinson oh wow Mr B Miss, well yeah we, we, you know he's obviously a very uh, a real petrol head and had some, some fascinating cars but the, the story of this car is brilliant because he gave this car as you can see to the works prepared badge here this car went to Aston Martin um, with a brief to make it a light, uh, the lightest Zagato possible and the most powerful in order to go club racing in the Aston Martin Owners Club Championship. I need to come back to them. Is it what I need yeah, to come back? Well, we need to do some more stuff. Take the Zagato out because your your yes. your life will be changed after. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, I say it's probably time to move on to today's main show. Okay, fine, I'm not on some twisty Alps road chasing down a 355 Ferrari like Piers Brosnan did as Bond in the film Goldeneye. It doesn't really matter, I don't really care if only Miss Moneypenny could see me now. Um, but as cool as I think I look in this car, or as cool as this car makes me feel, I'll let you in on a bit of a secret. People often say that the Aston Martin DB5 isn't actually that good to drive. Uh, I don't know if that's because expectations are unrealistically high, having seen this car thrashed around so dynamically on the silver screen so many times, uh, or because of the kind of competition it had when it launched. DB5 came out in the mid-60s alongside the Jaguar E-Type and the Ferrari 250. You know, yeah, big competition, and well, it didn't really live up to the competition. But I feel like with all Aston Martins, it's not really the driving dynamics that make these cars so desirable and right here right now I'm on the M25 one of the most boring uninteresting unsmooth motorways in the UK and I am loving life the sound the feel the way I think I look this, this wooden steering wheel or the switch gear it's so beautifully detailed this particular car is an exceptionally rare specification it's a factory left-hand drive with factory air conditioning it all feels stunning you do have to remember you are in a 60s car though so yeah brakes squidgy as hell got to be a little bit gentle with switching between the gears the car moves around quite a bit and on a big motorway like this everything else seems huge even Ford Fiestas seem giant I'm like oh get away from me because this car is 
very expensive. I mean, the cars, the other cars at Dylan's showroom were also pricey, but DB5s these days for good ones, it's a million pounds. It's a million pounds, which is why it's so appropriate to take it to this 30 million pound mansion, but it does make it a little bit unnerving being out here. It's not that slow though, I have to say. It, it really likes to get up and go. It's not a happy car going slowly. In traffic, traffic lights are not happy. It, it just wants to absolutely fly. And I wish today I could just, I don't know, find somewhere to let it fly. Scotland, probably. But I'm, I'm running a bit late for Nick. I feel a bit bad, I got a bit carried away. At Dylan's and today's primary focus or job is aiding Nick in his shoot. It's, it's not supposed to be all about me. So yes, let's crack on and go find this insane house. So welcome to Cherry Hill, this incredible house in the Wentworth Estate, as I mentioned, in Surrey. But we're really just outside London. It's a very sort of, you know, desirable place for people who want to commute back into London, but also enjoy a little bit of the, well, you know, greenery that Surrey offers. Uh, this entire estate was kind of developed in the 1920s, and it's sort of been, well, very popular amongst, yeah, wealthy individuals, but also sort of celebrities. Elton John's lived here, Sir Bruce Forsyth, Sir Bruce Forsyth. Wow, I can't say his name, Sir Bruce Forsyth. That was harder to say than I thought. Uh, Ron Dennis, of course, big McLaren man. Uh, Eddie Jordan, Prince Nassim, the boxer. Yeah, always been popular. This particular house, whilst it hasn't always been called Cherry Hill, has kind of been one of the iconic houses as part of the Wentworth Estate because of its kind of modernist design. Uh, originally owned by the US ambassador, John Hay Whitney, who was kind of a big party guy. I mean, maybe a big successful guy, but a big party guy. He used to host royalties, dignitaries, socialites here. And you'll see as we head inside, it's the perfect party hosting house, really. But it's absolutely stunning. It's been through a sort of major redevelopment, it's sort of an overhaul, uh, so I've got to actually shout out the developers who've been doing that for allowing me to have a look around this place whilst Nick is also filming it. Um, so yeah, I haven't really done a house tour before, but it's just such an amazing opportunity. I thought I'd show you what this place is like. Nick is going to help me film as we sort of walk around, and yeah, I guess I'll just show you what it's like to be inside a £30 million house just outside London. Somewhat confusingly, there are three entrances to this house. We're going to assume that this is the main entrance, but you could probably use any of the three and they're all equally as good as each other, but please, come on in. Now, for those of you that are fashion conscious, not me, uh, you may notice I've got some plastic bags on my shoes. Uh, as you can imagine, this house is in immaculate condition that it is for sale. So we're being very careful not to leave any marks of ourselves as we walk through. I've brought you kind of straight into this kind of, this foyer, this kind of entrance hall area. A big thing about this house, the views out into the garden. I mentioned it outside, this kind of thought of being outside of London, but close to it. You want to really enjoy the scenery. We're going to talk about that a lot, I'm sure, as we walk through the house. But yeah, super nice area just to greet people, say hi, thanks for coming. Nick, thanks for having me here. Um, and we'll kick things off by actually kind of continuing through this direction because it kind of invites you straight away into the library. Now, when I first arrived, Nick said that this room really reminded him of being on a super yacht. Unfortunately, I haven't really spent any time on super yachts, but I have watched a lot of Below Deck <laughs> on TV. And he's not wrong. This has got a real sort of boat vibe to it, helped by the kind of wooden floor, but I guess also some of the decorations that the guys, the developers have done to this space. Um, but look at this beautiful area, this cutaway, letting in huge amounts of daylight to this kind of central area. It does make you feel like maybe you're on a, on a boat or something like that. Remember I mentioned those kind of separate entrances? Well, here you go. One of the three, not the main entrance that we used, but another one. And I like to think that's because if you're hosting a party, you don't want people accessing the main house. You're like, oh, just please use the West Wing entrance and stay away from the rest of the house. I re this is an amazing, amazing space and somewhere I'd love to attend a party. Wink, wink. Mm -hmm. 
So if upstairs is the perfect entertaining space for your drinks party, this is where you can head once you know it gets a little bit later and you want the music to get loud and you want people to start dancing around. You've got loads of space to do it here. You could have a DJ, you could be totally rocking out in privacy. No one's you know, gonna interrupt you. But of course, this being a 30 million pound house, and this is also a pool, so I should get off this because it's going to disappear and a swimming pool is going to appear. We continue now upstairs and this is the West Wing's guest bedrooms. As we ascend, got a lovely view of the DB5, more on that to come later. Some beautiful artwork has been hung by the developers currently. And we've got two bedrooms, as I mentioned, the first of which in here. And then to the end past this incredible sort of glass canopied area, come into the next spare room. I actually secretly kind of prefer this one because you've got a bit of this sort of tree foliage going on as well. It feels a little bit more private, a little bit more secluded, but also like you're kind of in the woods or the jungle. Um, so yeah, it's really nice, this room. I think it's got its own ensuite as well as I think all of the guest rooms yeah. do. Yep, Nick's just confirming that for me. Uh, but yeah, access to the balcony again. And yeah, this for me feels like one of the more private and tranquil spare rooms. Back in the entrance hall foyer then, and this time we're going to head to the east wing, staying on the ground floor. Now, there are lots of doors from this point onwards. I'm not going to open them all because, well, most of them are like closets or wardrobes or downstairs toilets, I guess. So yeah, just assume that that's what's behind these doors if I don't open them. Anyway, welcome to your kitchen. I think if you're buying a house for 30 mil, you've got a chef. Maybe I'm wrong, um, but yeah, I just want to be in here a bit like, yeah, eggs and things like that. I don't really cook, as you can tell. Um, but yeah, absolutely huge space, this. Loads of loads of really nice details, including this lovely breakfast table, I think we're going to call it. I mean, I guess you could have dinner here, but it feels a little bit less formal than the formal dining room, which we're going to check out in two seconds. But yeah, uh, really nice, huge kind of, you know, circular cutaway above this kind of breakfast or informal dining table, letting loads more light into this area. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this part of the house. I'd love to have a croissant and a coffee whilst my chef makes me something a little bit more sophisticated than eggs. Um, anyway, continuing through, the third entrance to the house. This, I don't quite understand this entrance as much as I do the other two, but I think maybe you could separate this entire part of the house into its own living quarters. Come on through to the formal dining room. And you're gonna notice straight away, the sound quality has completely changed from one of that kind of marble, echoey, reflective open spaces that we've been in before. Suddenly things are a little bit more subdued, a little bit more serious. You can have very formal conversations in here during your formal dinner party. Oh, hello ma'am, are you enjoying my house? That kind of thing, I would suppose. Uh, again, lots of artwork. I really like the sort of circular nature of this room. But once again, light coming in from the ceiling, that natural daylight is absolutely epic. Is anyone else in love with this house yet? Because I'm honestly becoming more and more obsessed. I mean, look at that. Past your DB5 and whatever other cars you might have parked on the driveway. Kind of want to just stand. This is how I'd have my coffee. Just here, looking at my cars, going, ah, oh, what a life, what it's like to be rich. <laughs> Am I really need to work a lot harder? Because, yeah, this is incredible. Um, we come up to, I guess you'd kind of call this the master floor, the master bedroom. You're not ready for this because this is depressingly about four times bigger than my flat in London and what is the nicest apartment I've ever been to in my life and it's part of a house. So yeah, come on through. The actual bedroom itself is just, well, I'm gonna say near on perfect, a really nice size with a fireplace just behind Nick, which he won't be able to spin around and show you, but I'll overlay some shots. 
incredible views over the garden. And of course, you can put your own style, your own look and feel in here, but the way the guys are presenting it today, I think it's just fantastic. Uh, yeah, a super nice place to get your night's sleep after your hard day's work, making even more money, I'm sure. We'll come through to the first of two bathrooms that the master suite has, because, well, if you're a couple, uh, you might want to have separate bathrooms, how dignified. If you're an individual person, maybe you just want to change it up days of the week. On Monday, I'll use this bathroom, Tuesday, the other one. Um, again, I'm assuming all of this is onyx marble, absolutely stunning, and it's everywhere. I'm a big bath guy. Maybe I'm revealing too much about myself, stunning bath. Uh, we've also got a shower, we've got a separate toilet to the facility there as well. Nice little thing to sit on and pass the time. Uh, but yeah, again, amazing details and it's just a really nice calming place to be and a great place to get ready for your day. But it's this one, one of two bathrooms. I still, I'm still shocked by that. So we'll come on through, continue through this master suite. We end up in the dressing room. Now, this is definitely what I call goals in my life. Uh, my clothing situation is a mess. Um, not that I have enough clothes to fill this actual dressing room, uh, but I'd love to have something like this. Absolutely amazing to wake up each day, flick through your clothes, get ready, get changed. Again, still looking out onto that stunning view. So what I was saying earlier about this is bigger than my flat, I mean, I don't have a living room this big in my flat, and this is this part of the bedroom suite. So nice, so cool, and so private. It means that if you've got guests staying with you, if you've got a party going on, even if you want some separate time from your partner, you can come in here and relax and chat before then making your way through to your second bathroom. I think, Nick, this is your favorite as well, right? Yeah, I really like this one. Yeah, Nick's a big fan of this one. Now, I've been referencing James Bond a lot today and once you get up here this is very much the James Bond skyfall moment where you can come and stand on your own roof terrace surveying these quite outrageous views the golf course well kind of surrounds us here Wentworth golf course there's actually a fairway just there so you can applaud people's shots try not to put them off but yeah, I mean, I keep talking about places to have coffee because I'm coffee obsessed in this house. Having some benches up here, some stools, a little umbrella, whatever it might be. And starting your day with this kind of view is pretty damn spectacular. And also, I'm starting to really notice the specific trees and wildlife and things going on out here now that we've actually stepped outside and we're not just looking at it through glass. But yeah, absolutely incredible. What an unbelievable experience touring that house. Huge thanks to Nick and to the developer for allowing or making it all happen. If you're interested, if you're out there and you're actually interested in this house or want to find out more, maybe even want to buy it, I'll put a link below. And yes, please invite me once you've done so. And I do think you have to buy a DB5 along with the house because it just fits this place so well. It looks amazing, I think. At least the image and things like that. It's been such a cool experience. I kind of feel like I want to do a whole proper video now on db5s but huge thanks as well to dylan miles of course for lending me the car it's been an, an, an epic one but i hope you guys have enjoyed it let me know below do you want to see more houses like this do you want to see more combinations of cool cars and cool houses i uh, know it seems like a well i've really enjoyed it so anyway yeah give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come